right? Okay, so moving on from diet to exercise. So the, the exercise was just 30 minutes a day. Was there any further guidance on mm-hmm. what kind of exercise? Yeah. All right. So exercise, um, the guidance for exercise was a minimum of 30 minutes, uh, at least five days a week, um, using perceived exertion scale, hitting 60 to 80% perceived exertion. So, you know, movement that requires increased breathing, but you can still hold a conversation, sort of the range of that. So you're, 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 you're getting some movement in, but you're not, um, uh, up towards max. And again, yes, our, our, it was our read on the literature. Mm. Exercise is fabulously beneficial. Um, and again, you know, let me just say that I am not advocating that we all do that type of intervention forever. It was mm. for this program and we were trying to uh, you know, it has to be as one size fits all as possible. And, mm. in, in, you know, when you're doing a study, um, too much exercise or pushing someone who's uh, a couch potato towards an aggressive exercise program um, would be problematic. And we would see aberrant cha- negative changes um, under lack of movement likewise is associated with problems. And, 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 and that's corroborated in the literature specifically relating to DNA methylation. And I think in our paper, you'll see a handful of citations. Um, more evidence is coming out showing exercise is beneficial to aging, of course, and specifically as measured by DNA methylation. So just a, a thought that occurred to me on that. So if, suppose one of your guys was a, was a runner Right, and he did like an hour hard exercise every day. Um, yeah, was he what asked do you to do? Cut, was he asked to cut back or? Indeed, he was. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. We had a CrossFit junkie as a participant, and and it was challenging for him to to pull it back. Yeah, right. it was. But we, yeah, that was the that was the program. <laughs> I am, you know, I'm a cyclist. I was a competitive cyclist in college and I absolutely love to do my interval training. And I love to, you know, just get my heart rate up as I'm, as I'm comfortable and accustomed to doing, you know, in the book that I'm, that, that, that we're working on and, and, and certainly in clinical practice, there's room for that. And I think as we have ready access to epigenetic testing, as we're able to, you know, grab, you know, clock data almost as regularly as we can measure our glucose. I mean, we're going to know, and we're going to really be able to exquisitely individualize interventions. I mean, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're in a, really a revolution, you know, a medical Mm -hmm. revolution now. I mean, in 2017, um, epigenetic testing was available only really only in the research setting. I mean, and still by and large, it's, it's limited to the research setting. I know that's, that's changing, but um, clinicians need to have access, you know, ready Mm -hmm. access to these, to these important tools. Protocol. Let me let me actually just go back and just point out one study that you can our, our paper is published in in aging and it's free. Um, it's 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 open source. But, you know, there is some evidence that pushing exercise forward, you can see this in professional athletes in particular, um, mm. even amateur athletes. But but in this one particular study, it can be a pro aging um, mm. uh, activity you know, excessive exercise. And anybody who who's participated in sort of organized sports knows that at the end of the season, you often, you know, you often get sick. <laughs> so, I mean, there is sort of a dip in our immune resilience when you're, when you're training at a high level for a long period of time. Um, and is that okay? You know, or is that a pro-aging, you know, phenomena? You know, I don't know that we know. No, but you would think so. I mean, mm-hmm. Just yeah, and maybe for some of us and, mm-hmm. and, and less so for others, but yeah, that's yeah. a question. The relaxation response technique is designed to elicit a state of deep relaxation which engages the parasympathetic nervous system. It's a way to turn off the fight or flight response and bring the body back to pre-stress levels. In the trial protocol, it's suggested to practice 10 to 20 minutes twice per day. The steps of the process are available in a link in the description. 
The technique was invented by Dr. Herbert Benson from Harvard Medical School. There is also a book, The Relaxation Response, by Dr. Benson, which you can reference. So, relaxation protocol. So, you had a specified relaxation protocol, the... Uh, the, the, yeah, Herbert Benson, the, relax the Herbert Benson. relaxation Relax yes. response. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, can you tell me, kind of, why did you pick that one? And do you think other, like, other forms of meditation would, would do as well? Absolutely. I definitely think other forms of meditation would do. And you'll see that we cite some of those in the study. Um, and again, I'm teasing that out a little bit more in, in the book. Um, we needed an easy turnkey sort of validated tool um, that we could readily prescribe that didn't have a high learning curve that didn't require, you know, years of practice prior to and Benson relaxation response is that. It's, it's just a very straightforward tool for those folks who are just, who are new to a meditation practice. And so that's why we chose it. And the data, uh, you know, appear pretty clear that people who've got a good solid meditation practice or, you know, are engaged in yoga or Tai Chi and, you know, other, other programs um, have younger uh, biological ages. And you know, what's interesting too, is you can see some, you know, apparently favorable epigenetic changes, not, not, not to biological aging, but just sort of moving in the direction of favorable changes, even in new meditators and people without a lot of experience, sort of suggesting that, you know, they're on the right, they're on the right path. So um, the other piece, you know, as I wrote about in the paper is, well, First of all, there was an interesting study looking just at the relaxation response and seeing favorable outcome in age reversal in healthy individuals. And I cite that in the paper. But um, the other interesting piece is the, you know, the, the paper again out of Horvath's lab where they look at the, um, you know, the 2013 clock that we used and, and show that, you know, up to 25% of those CPG sites are, 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 are glucocorticoid response elements, you know, just suggesting that stress, um, particularly in the Horvath and that particular clock, I mean, was a potent driver of aging. I mean, it's really kind of mind blowing. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.